a picture-perfect life appearing in top fashion shows with celebrity friends, wealthy lifestyle, everything you can possibly have. What could go wrong? Influencer Abby Choi's case is being named one of the most shocking cases to happen in Hong Kong since 2013. Some are calling this another real-life parasite family. A family with greed, lies, and leeching off of someone else. And the story might teach us that the person that you trust the most just might secretly wish the worst upon you. This case is being talked about globally and I try to get the most and the correct information that I can for this video. So who was Abby Choi? Abby was 28 years old and she was a Hong Kong style icon influencer, socialite, and it's known that her herself and her parents come from a very wealthy lifestyle and family. It seems like her parents does some kind of big businesses in mainland China, and she herself reportedly has about 12 to 13 million US dollars in net worth, owning buildings, businesses, assets, etc. She has over 100,000 followers on Instagram. Maybe she has a Weibo, which is like a bigger version of Instagram that Chinese people use. She herself styled herself really well. She loved Gucci, Dior, Chanel, Valentino, and regularly attended fashion weeks all over the world, especially Paris Fashion Week. She was photographed with many celebrities all over the world. She was also friends with one of the wealthiest and the top celebrities in China. She was also featured on many magazines such as Le Fichel Monaco, Elle, Harper's Bazaar, Vogue. She was also named one of the most sought after influencers in the industry. And this would be one of her last Instagram posts that she uploaded. She also was a mother, mother of four kids, only at 28 years old. And people were a little confused about the information about her current husband and her ex-husband. So here is the exact information. So when Abby was just 18 years old, she would meet a man named Alex. They got married, had two kids, and and sometime within four years since they were together, they got a divorce. And in 2016, when she was only 22 years old, Abby would marry her second husband, Chris. They went on to have two more kids, so in total, she's a mother of four. But the thing is, she was not legally married to Chris. They only had like a marriage ceremony and proposal for their friends and family. They weren't legally married. Chris is also known to be a wealthy businessman. His family is a founder and owner of a famous cafe casual dining restaurant in China called Tam J Yunnan Mixian. Again, because they were not legally married, Abby and her husband, current husband, were financially independent. Chris and his parents, so her current in-laws, would describe Abby as a great mother of four kids, kind-hearted, good person, always down to help, and quote from Chris, he said, she supported me and loved me very much. She also brought up four cute and obedient kids. It has been a blessing to be Abby's family and friend. She's also known to take really well care of the elders, her in-laws and her parents, buy them gifts, you know, dinners, and meet them often, and she was a really great wife. But not only her current in-laws, she would also be very respectful and take care of her ex in-laws, the grandparents of her two kids with Alex. And it's reported that she also financially supported her ex-in-laws even like seven years since she's divorced, which was the, the iffy part that I think a lot of people were like, WTF? Now to her defense, maybe because still she felt like they were family, they're forever linked because she has kids with Alex. They're forever her kid's grandparents and forever her kid's father. So I guess she felt obligated from her kind goodness of her heart to still help out. I don't know how many of you guys watching are married, have kids, but I don't yet. So maybe I don't fully understand it, but I think that's where it's coming from. But helping out your ex-in-laws, it seemed like it was getting a little too much for Abby. So when they were married, it's reported that Abby bought a luxury apartment for her in-laws, her ex-in-laws. She bought this for them when she was married to Alex. Now this wasn't just any town in any apartment. This was a luxury apartment. It was a place called the Kadori Hills. I don't think she owned the whole building. In Asia, you usually own your own apartment unit. It was a place that she bought for them because she also wanted her kids to feel safe and hang out with their grandparents. Now she personally purchased this apartment, but she put the apartment's owner name under her ex-father-in-law. That was probably rent-free for them. When you purchase a building, it's yours. You don't have to pay rent. Not only was she great to her ex-parents-in-law, but she was also very close to her ex-brother-in-law, 
Alex's older brother, who was Anthony, 31 years old. Now, reportedly, because Anthony was unemployed, Abby decided to hire Anthony as a personal driver. Again, I personally found it a little bit weird, but again, I'm not married, I don't have kids, so maybe I don't understand. I mean, at the end of the day, still, Anthony was her kid's uncle. It is also reported that Anthony and Abby would do some small side business together. She helped him buy a house. She was also paying for his expenses because technically he worked for her. So again, we see that Abby is financially taking care of her brother-in-law as well. He would be invited to her luxury birthday parties. There's a picture of them together. There's many selfies actually of them together. Anthony would up upload in his Instagram about Abby calling her sister, calling her hashtag family, and just kind of boasting about how close they were. So we see that it looks like Abby was very chill with her ex-in-laws. It's even reported that she would invite her ex-in-laws with her current in-laws and they would like travel together, they would have dinners together, and she was really not only financially taking care of them, but like including them in her everyday life. I think she felt obligated because again, for the sake of her kids. I think it's always amazing when you see one parent that's been divorced that are chill with their ex-partner or in-laws because I'm like, would it be awkward for your current in-laws and your ex-in-laws and your current husband seeing like your ex-husband's family, your ex-brother-in-law being your personal driver, seeing him every single day. But who exactly were Abby's ex-in-laws, really? I mean, why would someone like Abby wealthy, beautiful, exclusive social life get even involved with a parasite-like family. Now, it's reported that her ex-husband, Alex, and his family still used to be quite, you know, well-off in the beginning. And her ex-father-in-law is a 65-year-old man who was a former police chief, quote, received a long-term service commendation from the Hong Kong police force. And he was quite up there in power in the law enforcement in Hong Kong until somewhere in the 2000s when he was accused by an unknown woman of S.A. S. Assault, and he would resign after this. Her ex-mother-in-law was known to reportedly file a bankruptcy in 2016. Her ex-brother-in-law, Anthony, had a large amount of debt and was sued by the bank in 2019. Now, her ex-husband, Alex was involved in a gold investment scam in 2015 where he scammed four people out of five million Hong Kong dollars. He would use the victim's money, which a lot of them, it was their life savings that they trusted this guy with, and he ran off with the money. So I know I am nitpicking like the criminal past of them, but we see that it seems like they're all pretty bad at managing money and have some big financial issues. And the story goes that up till Abby's passing, her ex-in-laws and Abby would get into a big financial dispute. Part we know is that Abby would have a big financial dispute about the luxury apartment that she bought for her ex-in-laws. Now again, the ex-in-laws were living here up till the current moment. It came to a point when Abby wanted to sell this apartment unit that was still under her ex-father-in-law's name. Abby seeked some legal advice from her lawyer and they said that as long as she can prove that she paid for the apartment, legally, if she sold it, she can recoup a lot of the money back even if the apartment was under her father-in-law's name. And apparently this is the main dispute that they had about this apartment building. According to Abby's friends, she was adamant about selling the apartment and her ex-in-law said, well, where are we gonna go? And they were worried that they were gonna be left out on the streets, have nowhere to go if Abby sold this apartment. Her ex-in-laws threatened them, quote, if you sell the apartment without arranging things for us, I will kill you. And apparently, according to Abby's friends, she had plans to somehow arrange another apartment for them. But I think we can see that Abby probably thought, why do I have to arrange a place for her ex-in-laws? Like, that's a little too much. And maybe the ex-in-laws thought, this is under my name, this was a gift for us, how dare you sell it and maybe the apartment that abby was gonna give them was like a downgrade and they did not want to downgrade from a luxury apartment i mean we don't know how the conversation went but it seems like the ex-in-laws were feeling very ungrateful and her ex-in-laws felt like she had a duty to continue to care for them financially even after she was divorced it is also reported that the in-laws did not like how abby was quote arranging her finances a lot of people are saying like what does it matter to them this is your ex daughter-in-law, she's married, she has her own thing going on, 
why do you have to get into her finances? This is none of your beeswax. Now, why did Abby want to take away the apartment that the, her ex-in-laws were living in if possibly, if it's under someone else's name, it seems like she gave it to them maybe as a gift. This is just a speculation, but maybe because she was super young when she bought this for them, that, you know, the father-in-law probably persuaded the apartment be under his name and then, you know, later on, they'll give the partial of money back to Abby. I mean, maybe there was some kind of arrangement that we don't know about. But from the way that Abby wanted to sell this apartment building, it seemed like she did not want to really take care of her ex-parents anymore. Like she slowly wanted them to be independent without her. And from here, this is what a lot of people, in my personal opinion, believe that her ex-in-laws felt like they were really getting jealous and bitter off of Abby's success. She was getting bigger and bigger. She was a social media influencer. She had all these celebrity connections. She had a lot of money and assets and married to a very wealthy guy. They were invited to her birthday parties, luxury birthday parties and, and traveling and dinners. So they saw how Abby and her friends and her family were living in. And although it was out of Abby's kindness to invite them, I think they were very bitter and jealous whenever they were invited. Instead of saying, oh my God, I am grateful that my ex-daughter-in-law still involves us. No, for them, it was more like my son, Alex. He's in all kind of financial trouble, scamming people. She's having a better life. Oh my God, look all these luxuries she's having birkin bags and like invited to fashion shows i am so jealous and bitter and it's because of her success that my sons aren't doing well i think they really felt like they were always behind abby and started to possibly blame their own downfall on her success and started to just have this like crazy thought that she was their enemy and i think we can guess from the conclusion of today's story how probably it was difficult for abby to deal with these and laws. So police believe that the ex-father-in-law, the ex-cop was the mastermind of this plan. And according to the police, right now they believe that he decided to take out Abby because he knew that she was not married and all her assets and money would go to his grandkids. And somehow he gathered all the family members, his wife, his two kids, Anthony, let alone the person that she saw every day that she trusted and that he called her her sister, all fell for this plan and all agreed read and participated. And the ex-father-in-law would carefully plan this at first by renting a villa in Long Wei Village, which was about 30 minutes drive from the city of Hong Kong, a month prior and started to practice and plan how they were going to execute this plot. Neighbors remember seeing the father enter the property a couple times, saying that he never smiled, he would always look around his surroundings, and you know, thought that his behavior was a little odd. And finally, on February 21st, Anthony would be the one to pick up Abby. Anthony would always pick up Abby, even pick up her kids. I mean, he was her driver. And somewhere along the way, they still don't know exactly who, but they believe that Anthony was the one who struck Abby in the head, put her into a coma, took her to that villa that the father rented out. It is still unknown. The police are trying to figure out the exact timeline and like how this all happened, but they did find a hole in her right skull. So they believe that this was the cause of her death initially so she was knocked out by some kind of weapon and some neighbors say that they heard screaming of a woman for a couple hours i'm not sure if that is confirmed yet so maybe she was alive maybe not someone most likely the father-in-law maybe anthony and alex were involved they would precisely dismember her body in multiple pieces where majority of her bottom parts of the body like her foot legs would be put into the fridge inside this villa and her head with her hair still attached would be found inside of a steel pot that was boiling some kind of soup. I don't know how much more evil you can get than that. And some part of her body, like especially her upper part of the body, is still not found and police are looking through it. And they believe someone was trying to dispose of body parts one by one. And the first batch was disposed February 22nd. Abby was reported missing the day that she went missing and police looking at some CCTV footage would start to speculate her ex-in-laws. This is a photo of her last known to be alive with Anthony. They would start to interrogate her ex-in-laws and finally found where she would be at. Inside the villa, they found multiple weapons used to dismember the body, found her ID, cards, and her bag. Shortly after all of her ex-in-laws were arrested, and Alex, her ex-husband, was the last to be caught. He was found trying to flee by boat, and he was caught the moment that he was about to flee. He was caught with lots of money, so 
you could tell he knew what was going on and he wanted to disappear. All of them, the ex-father-in-law, the mother, the two brothers are in custody without bail and all three of the men are charged with murder while the mother is charged with lying to the police and they believe that there's a fifth person who might be involved. It's reported that it is the mistress of the ex-father-in-law that might have helped out. Some of Abby's friends 